Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working in Procreate, but I kind of had a realization that I kind of wanted to do a reference sheet again of my OCs. I did this one on Clip Studio Paint, but I'm actually not very fond of the format or even like the rendering of Masaki that I did. So instead, I want to make the reference sheets in Procreate so I can render as normal, but I want to format them similarly how I do what I call quote unquote my sketch pages for my 17 artwork. So this is an example of Wanu where I kind of have one kind of like front and center that's more finished and rendered, and then I have some surrounding him that are kind of less finished and a little bit more sketchy. So let's go ahead and make a new canvas and start to work on our first, I guess like sketch page reference sheet. I'm not too sure how to call it. It's probably just a normal reference sheet, but formatted in a way that makes more sense to myself. So to be honest, I kind of deem this format of like how I want to present my OCs in a way that's a little bit more condensed and in one kind of space, more of a self-indulgent way of making myself remember how to draw my own OCs. So right off the bat, I changed the canvas color to be a little bit more of a tan color or just a little bit yellowy and a little bit more warm compared to what I usually use, which is kind of like almost a, like an off-white gray color. So to start off, I am going to be just sketching right away with the sketch round brush instead of planning out any kind of like format or planning out the poses like prior, which is what I usually do whenever I do like any digital piece that I requires me to finish it up to like a certain point. But I noticed that a few of the reasons why I don't really like the previous reference sheet that I made of Masaki that I did on Clip Studio Paint is a, a few things. So one, I don't really like how I did the layout for it. And I feel like me as a person, I don't like when I don't know how to explain the reference sheet per se. I like seeing more artwork of the character rather than having too much that's like, it feels too designy in a way, which is why I'm saying like, I rather make a reference sheet that's like more akin to what I would want rather than making a reference sheet that I'm going to give other people to be able to interpret. So it's more, like I said, self-indulgent and more for myself rather than, you know, if I want people to be very accurate with drawing my character, I'll probably make like an actual properly explained reference sheet if I wanted to. But to kind of keep it more on like the looser end and making sure that I don't get too bogged down with making sure that every single detail about the character looks the same. So bottom line is just, I kind of want to just have fun with this. So in terms of how I usually do my sketch pages is that I will kind of draw starting from one side and will kind of like fan out or layer in such a way that things look like they're overlapping and it'll kind of make more sense as we move along and add some finishing touches like adding white outlines to make them look like they stand out from one another in a kind of more layering sense but i think in the previous reference sheet oc video thing that i did with masakis there were some points that i think are kind of nice to do if you're doing a reference sheet and you're planning it to give let's say to commissioners or you're giving it to somebody for them to draw your ocs for whichever reason so one is like having flats for your i guess like a full body if anything because sometimes when people do the color swatches it sometimes it's hard to determine where those color swatches are supposed to be placed for the character so having your flats on your character right away is a good way for you know, people or artists to determine what colors they should use when coloring your character and they don't have to worry about like the shading color and the highlight color, which I've seen some people be very particular about how they make their reference sheet where they include stuff like the highlight colors, the shadow colors and stuff, which I don't think is very necessary because those colors will definitely shift with the kind of like lighting of the piece or like the artist's preference in terms of I don't know, maybe they like to shade with various different colors versus you who maybe wants to shade with like a very particular color. So it's a little bit more restrictive if you do that and a little bit confusing for the person trying to read your reference sheet. So technically, the way how I'm going to be treating these 
reference sketch sheet pages, whatever you want to call them, is that because I keep saying pages, it's more like of the reason that I want to be able to continually add on to each of the sheets in a way that if I were to, I guess, like send you the reference sheets themselves, it might be like, oh, it might be like a stack of three or might be like two pages or anything like that, which I've seen a lot of like, maybe I'm slightly influenced by like when VTuber mamas do their reference sheets of the characters. Sometimes they keep it very simple, one kind of like canvas of like front, back, side view of the left side, side view of the right side, that's it. But then some of them do like full blown, you do the same like front, back, some people do like the under clothing, I guess, like if they have like a bunch of layers for the clothing, some of them do like side views, the you know, like three quarter view, some of them do like close ups on the shoes or like accessories, or in some of them, like I'm specifically talking about uh, TCB Mama, who does like Ike Evelyn and Izuru, I believe, from Hollow Stars. So, the thing I like about the reference sheet is that they include like one that's kind of more like a compilation feeling, which is kind of nice because you get the feeling a little bit more of the character themselves in a more finished way kind of, but it's like still in a collage kind of way. So I kind of like that idea and I feel like my sketch pages already kind of fulfill a lot of those things that I wanted. So I'm gonna do that for the reference sheets probably moving forward. So for today's video, which I forgot to mention probably earlier, is that I am drawing my OC Kaisen, which you guys have probably been seeing a lot more recently just because I've been having like a blast just drawing him in general and I'm trying to also get used to his design so drawing him as frequently as I can will allow me to either remember his design or start to shorthand his design in a way that makes sense. So oftentimes I would sketch all of the different like poses, expressions, anything I want all on one layer but sometimes it's easier to sketch them on different layers so you can maneuver them a little bit easier. So I do want to format them all in a very similar way, but kind of keeping stuff a little bit more minimal. So I'm probably going to keep this canvas color consistent for all of my OC's sketch page reference sheets. And I'm going to add a little grid just to make it a little bit cuter aesthetically. Then after that, I set my sketch to multiply and then we are going to put down a base color for the entirety of all the characters so that I can then alpha lock it and we can actually continue to color more appropriately with the actual colors associated with the character. So what I decided to include in what I would consider like the first page of his reference sheet is that starting from the very left going to the right. So from the left, we have a more, I guess like waist up just below the hips version of him, which will give me kind of like a general gist of his outfit. Then after that, we have the kind of headshot version, which is for me going to be the main focus. So I will do the majority of the rendering for him. After that, we have the one above him to his left, which is just a yawning one because I wanted something to show a little bit more of his, the other side of his face, I guess. Then we have the chibi in the bottom right hand corner, which allows me to show his entire outfit in a very simplified form. Then the one above him is one with his arm being outstretched. So my actual plan for the one with his arm being outstretched was to make it kind of transparent so that you could see what was underneath his kind of bellowy sleeve. But I thought it'd be a little bit too complicated to kind of render and describe. So I'm going to put more of a different focus for the second page of his reference sheet a little bit later. So if you're watching this video and you stay until the end, I will try my best to get the second page done as well. I won't show any of the progress for it on today's video just because I feel like the one sheet itself already took up the majority of the time and I kind of wanted to spend a little bit more time when I was deciding on how I wanted to render each particular piece or how I was choosing colors and all that or deciding which ones had like a specific kind of finish and which ones had more energy put towards them versus like what I left kind of more sketchy. Hopefully that makes sense. So a part of me feels like this kind of way of treating this reference sheet, very sketchy. I guess it's not very sketchy. Okay, maybe I should clear that up actually first. So even though I keep referring to a lot of my 
What I would consider like a compilation of drawings into one canvas where I'm layering them in such a way, I keep calling them sketch pages because initially they used to be more sketchy with very rough colors and I would not render them. So for a long time I did that kind of style for a lot of the 17 drawings that I did. So. It eventually evolved into me doing more finished artwork and just the act of having more of a compilation of drawings together on one canvas where they were not, at least up to my standard, like 100% rendered or finished, is which is why I keep referring them to sketches, which is technically not accurate because I do end up rendering them to some extent. So if anything, it just feels like they're unfinished drawings at some point or just very rough drawings. So sorry if that confuses anybody. But back to the topic. So I wanted to keep these loose because the one that I did for Masaki in Clip Studio Paint I think I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out like a format, expressions, what I want to include like in terms of like the side views of him so that people can draw him accurately. I just don't like how it looks nor do I like how I ended up rendering the character or anything like that. But I think this way, if I end up disliking a certain kind of page because my idea is like to do at least maybe three to four for every OC that I have and then if I ever have to commission somebody I'll just pick like maybe one or two or I'll give all four as like a whole stack for me to give the artist and be like you know choose what you want to use for like whatever will help you to draw the character in your particular style without me feeling like I have to commit to one reference sheet even though like I ended up hating what the reference sheet looks like. Hopefully that makes sense. But enough talk about the actual feelings about the reference sheet. Let's talk about the process a little bit. So. After I finished doing the majority of the rough colors, adding in my shadows, my highlights and stuff, this is kind of where I determined that I want this main one to be, or like the larger kind of front facing portrait of Kaisen to be the main focus. Just because I draw his face probably the most rather than his entire outfit. So I kind of wanted to make sure that I got his vibe and his general aesthetic correct for at least like moving on in the future instead of having to refer to my sketchbook for like a reference of him. So because of that, I am going to be spending probably the majority of my time rendering out this particular one, making sure he looks all clean and pristine, making sure that colors are somewhat accurate and depicted in a way that I think suits him. And then after that, any drawings that are around him, I am going to kind of pick and choose the level of finish that I want for them. But all of them will at least get some kind of touch-ups for the most part because I didn't want to leave it too too sketchy or too vague in terms of what things were supposed to be. So to kind of prep for that, after I did the rough colors, I changed the sketch colors to kind of fit more appropriately to certain areas like making sure that the lines were dark enough for his hair but I want uh, to add a little bit more warmth to his face. I've also changed the line art color to be a little bit more cooler for his eyes. Then after that I merged my sketch with my rough colors and we can go ahead and do a little bit of rendering which is what I've been currently doing probably for the last two or three minutes while I was rambling. So before I actually started to render, I noticed that I kind of made his entire color palette, or not even the color palette, the way how I approached coloring him in general was very dark and it felt a little bit too contrasty in a way because the blacks were just too dark. And I don't know if it's because of how my camera was picking it up or because I was drawing at night, I didn't really notice how dark it was. I decided to add a screen layer of a very, very light blue I knocked down the opacity and it kind of gave me a little bit more wiggle room in terms of being able to darken up areas a little bit more easily rather than having everything stuck with a such dark shadow color, I guess, if that makes sense. But after that, I am able to just continue to render Kaisen to whatever level of rendering I desired because at this point, I didn't really treat, at least like for the filming process, the same way that I usually do where I try to limit myself to a certain amount of hours that I spend on a drawing so that 
so I don't have hours and hours of footage for me to sift through to edit. But for this one, so I would film certain parts and then I would, you know, sit back and relax and go render a little bit, come back and film some and kind of just go back and forth because I think I cut out so much footage of me just rendering out that one main Kaisen. So I'm gonna go ahead and go in my Procreate and actually check out how much time I spent in total on this so-called reference sheet for Kaisen, which probably might be a lot longer than some people might think, uh, considering that not everything is like rendered to the fullest. So I spent about five and a half hours on this, which might be on par with how long I spent on the Masiki one, just because, I don't know. I don't know if it's because like I don't really like doing like line art and stuff and I just already knew I wanted to do the kind of reference sheets in Procreate the next time I would tackle them. But something about just making them as sketch pages just feels a little bit more freeing and I do like the fact that I can probably just continually add more and more pages to them and eventually just create like a whole log of their character. And it makes it a little bit easier for myself to like identify where they are a little bit later because I'll probably just organize them in a way where they're side by side. So I definitely think there's like a bunch of different ways you can do your reference sheets for your characters. Some that are a little bit more like designy and very like methodically thought out with descriptions and all that stuff, which is really great for like especially if you're commissioning artists and stuff because you give a lot of information for them to not do a, like a lot of guesswork but i don't know i feel like a reference sheet should be also for yourself because i don't think everyone has the intention of drawing a character where they're going to be drawn by another person so if anything you come first Unless you're doing like, I guess like character sheets for like actual companies or like for projects where other people have to interpret it anyways, then maybe you have to think it out a little bit more thoroughly. But like I said, if it's for yourself in general, then format it for yourself. Give all the information that you want to give for yourself for you to interpret rather than thinking like, oh, I have to include absolutely every detail because I don't want the, like the next person who has to draw my OC to in interpret it incorrectly so yeah i don't i don't know maybe i'm just rambling too much about like my thoughts on reference sheets when it's not even that deep <laughs> but i have been having more fun kind of formatting it this way too because i'm able to fit a lot more like i mentioned earlier a little bit more of the personality of the character instead of doing like your typical t pose or like you know raise one arm or like the back view the side views all that stuff which like i said it's very helpful to have those in your reference sheet but for me sometimes it reads a little boring or if it's like text heavy it does make me a little bit too intimidated so i wanted to keep it almost everything visual i'll show you hopefully at the end the second page that i end up doing for kaisen because at least for his, I am going to add like very minimal text to explain the current sketch, if that makes sense. Like I have one where he's like kind of drunk a little bit or tipsy. So I wanted to add, you know, a little bit of a description so that people don't think he's just randomly, I don't know how you would interpret the expression, happy and blushy, I guess. He's kind of, I don't know, he's just drunk. And then... But I definitely think like text can also help quite a bit for your reference sheet as well. And you can do it like definitely block style where it's kind of like a block of text describing like personality or like a little bit of the backstory of your character or anything like that. Or if your character has like relationships with other characters in your universe, some people like to include those as well. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think that's probably it but for me i'm probably just gonna add like little notes here and there because like i said some of it's just for myself so for me to remember certain details about my characters and i used to do that in my sketchbook where i would write like likes and dislikes for my characters depending on the situation so like for masaki sometimes if his favorite flower changes i would write it down if he has a dessert that he's into now or like music that he wants to listen to i would write it down but at this point because i almost never reopen up my sketchbooks i don't remember and i probably 100 percent will forget in the future more and more details that i wanted to establish for him so kind of keeping them all in one place digitally is a little bit more helpful for myself if anything and i can also just like upload these to a cloud or something so i always will have access to them 
Oh, just kind of like one more thing about like doing flats for your reference sheet, which I think is very beneficial because I don't know if you can tell when I was doing like the lighting or picking like highlights and painting a little bit more for Kaisen, you can see that I chose various different highlight colors for his hair, but now you kind of have a chance that the person looking at your sheet might interpret it as his hair color rather than just highlights on one side. So that's why I think flats work a little bit better if you want less a kind of like errors in interpreting your, your character. But uh, moving along, so now that I've kind of finished up the kind of little sketches, drawings, whatever you want to call them to a certain degree, you can see that some of them still have sketchy lines, some of them are a little bit more finished in some aspects, and to kind of make them stand out from the background and from one another, I am going to add a white kind of border around them all so that they can kind of like separate themselves and certain ones that are in the back can be pushed back a little bit, the ones in the front will have like white outline kind of breaking up the two characters from one another. As for the space I'm adding his name, I also left space on the bottom to allow myself to add a last name at some later point. So in terms of adding kind of like an outline to your text in Procreate, I'm going to go ahead, duplicate my Kaisen text. I'm going to gauge and blur that Kaisen text to be a little bit more fuzzy. Then we'll use the automatic selection tool to select around that fuzzy text. Then you will invert it and then you can fill in kind of like a color underneath afterwards and then you can delete the fuzzy version later. There's probably a person out there that has a more detailed description or a video about it but I feel like this is the only way of doing like an outline for text in Procreate and it works well for the most part. But I think that's it for Kaisen. So at this point if I ended up doing a second sheet of Kaisen, I'll put it up just before the time lapse, but if I didn't, then oh, I'll just leave it blank at that point. So the next character that I'll probably do a reference sheet, I'll let you guys kind of decide. So whoever you want to kind of see me do another kind of sketch page-ish format for the reference sheet, let me know who you want to see. And hopefully in the future, quite soon, maybe in the next week or so, probably two weeks, I think, into closer to April, I will definitely work on those OC scenarios and hopefully we'll have a few more reference sheets kind of fleshed out so that you guys are more familiar with my OCs. And thank you again for suggesting a bunch of OC kind of scenario suggestions. There's a lot of fun ones that I really want to do, including Monopoly. So I'll definitely tackle those at some point. So thank you again for liking the OC content recently on my channel. I really do appreciate you guys liking my OCs. So yeah. I think that's it for today's video and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!